Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. I have some more items to review today, and these are from Secure. So, I've reviewed a few of their products before, the last one being the Sensory Screwdriver. I'll wink it from this one, that was really, really good. I know a lot of you liked that, and I also know quite a lot of you like this brand as well. So, in here, we have a soldering iron kit. And we also have a soldering, not a stand, a PCB holder. So we're going to look at these today together, both from Secure Mal. Let's have a quick look to see how much these cost first. Yeah, let's start with the really important stuff and then let's see how well they perform. Firstly, the soldering iron. So you can see at the moment you can buy the soldering iron itself with one tip. You can actually choose the type of tip. We can select here different tips, whichever you prefer. Or you can also buy it with four tips. Works out an extra roughly 12 euros. This is great if you already have a suitable USB-C PD power supply and you'd like to buy the soldering iron at an inexpensive price. So there's some nice options there. The other choice, and this is what they sent me, is the S99 kit. So we can see the price, 58 euros. This includes three tips, no four. One of them is already in the soldering iron, so we have the four tips. We have the little stand. Some lead-free solder, the little carry case, and the leads. There we can see some leads. This one's interesting. Number six says a XT60 to C line. Not sure what that is. I'll have a look, of course. This comes with a 65 watt power supply. The tips this uses are C245. C245 seems to be taking over the world at the moment. Eight years ago or so, everything was T12, and now this seems to be the successor. I do like the C245 tips, I find them to be very, very good. So we'll see how well this one works. And I'm sure if you try them, you will as well. I think you will like these types of tips. And there are so many different tips you can buy for this, the range is huge. They also recommend here the other product, which is the welding clamps as they call them. We'll have a look at those at the moment. Some information on the various options of power supplies you can use. It says the resistance of the shipped soldering iron tip is 5.5 ohms. And if you want, you can buy 2.5 ohm soldering iron tips. One would assume that gives you a higher wattage for the same voltage, but obviously you need the current. We can look at that also actually at the moment. I have some tips here. I can measure the resistance. We'll compare these if we can do that. There is a comparison with some other soldering irons here. We can see this. So the S99 runs off a 21 volt supply. Actually, I think the highest ones I have, USB-C PD power supplies are 20. 150 watts into a 2.5 ohm tip, 75 into a 5.5. But notice, note that the power supply that this comes with, if you buy the kit, is a 65 watt. So that will limit the power. I do have a 100 watt power supply here, so maybe we can just play with that on the review. If you want to buy just a soldering iron and use your own supply, seems to support a wide range of protocols, good. Including DC supply. A little bit of information here about the tips that we have with this. Okay. Again, this maximum power, but bear in mind the if you use it with the supplied power supply, it's 65 watt. Of course, you can just buy the soldering iron and tips if you want to use your own supply. And here we have some information about the types of power supplies we can use with the soldering iron. Power bank. LiPo cells. <laughs> PD or QC power supply. Or like a laptop type power supply, yeah. So it's very flexible, really, what we can use this with. 
So there's lots of information about this soldering iron, but at the end of the day, this will come down to how comfortable this feels to work with, really, how well it works. Here is the link to the tips. These are the 2.5 ohms. I just followed that link, so we can see we have quite a range of different ones we can use here. Cost of the tips are all basically the same, $9 just over. Here are the various styles we have on this listing. You can see them. So there really is a wide range of tips you can use with this soldering iron. This then is the PCB or welding clamp. Okay, so we can see that. We'll try this as well. Price of this is just over $16. If I have any discount codes, I will put them in the video description on this video. So have a look there, you may get an extra bargain. Okay, so that's what we have to review. Let's have a look at this now. Here is our soldering iron kit. We have power supply, USB, 65 watt. Let's just check the specifications of this. Printed on here. Yes, so this is 20 volts, 3.25 amps, that's 65 watt. Comes with the various adapters. You can order whichever you want. I have the EU kit. Oh yeah, nice positive click, so that's not gonna fall off. So that's the power supply. We have two connections on here. PD 65 watt. Let's see how long this is. I've just folded that in half. How long is that? Doesn't seem very long. Yeah, about 50 centimeters. So it's about one meter long. Could be a little bit more generous, but it's acceptable. The little stand. And of course the soldering iron, let's have a look. This has like a, feels like a kind of brushed aluminium, the actual housing. I don't think it's plastic. It's quite light, actually. That, according to the manual, is an earthing point, okay. It doesn't have like a rubber grip here to stop your fingers sliding down, but it's quite positive to hold, okay? Fairly small for one of these type with an integrated display controller, actually it's very slim that. Okay. Some lead free solder included. Oh, this is your instruction manual, which is a QR code. Okay, and we have the four tips. Let's have a look at these. Yes, yeah, standard C245 type tips or cartridges. This is a very pointed one. This is like a BC2, I would call that. The most similar to the chunky BC3 type that I like to use. This one is the knife type tip. And we have another conical type but not as fine as the first one so we have quite a nice selection of tips there i would prefer a bent conical that's just a personal preference but these are inexpensive and plentiful and there's lots of choices i had a look at this connector because i'm not actually really familiar with these this is for connecting to a battery so we can use a battery pack with the soldering iron as well and just checking, it's the same length lead as the USB-C, so the leads are the same length as each other. So this you can buy as a standalone product. It's also recommended to use with the soldering iron by Secure. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, this slides nicely. So that's the largest PCB we can fit in here, which is around 18 centimeters. So you could fit something like a mini ATX type PCB if it will clamp actually because of the edge here. Actually that won't. So yeah, not things with connectors right near the edge like that. But certainly something like a GPU could fit in here. Bear in mind the clamp probably is something you're going to use with small PCBs. 
Normally, with large PCBs, I don't have a problem to get the thing to keep still on the bench. It's the small ones that are moving around when I'm actually working on them. So, that's a useful size without a doubt. It's very easy to operate, just loosen the thing and out it comes. Go again, this is actually a PCB I'm going to be repairing shortly. Yeah, so very nice, easy slide operation. This is really quite rigid. Very solid feeling, actually. Let's try using this with the soldering iron. We'll have a little play around on some test PCBs I have. And let's see how well it actually works. Okay, I'm going to try the knife tip for a change. It's not one I always use. I have used them before. I was surprised actually how well they worked. So we'll put the knife tip on. Let's plug this in on the supply power supply. Power. Oh, it plays a little tune almost. This has a little LED in the connector here, I've noticed, that lights up. We can set the temperature on here. I think if we hold this in for a second, yes, that takes us to the menu. So we have various options here. Iron, idle, OLED, volt, calibrate, about. Yeah, we hold this button in to select the various menu options. So here we have, for example, in volt, we have power is on auto, protocol is auto few seconds that goes out iron hold the button working temperature I would normally work to about 350 so I'm going to turn that up in actual fact let's see how easy it is to do that without reading the manual first yeah this one is going to the various options centigrade Fahrenheit buzzer on start heat turbo settings it must have like a turbo option work temperature so i'll take this up to around 350 or 360 is what i normally use let's just leave it a few seconds see i think if it'll actually yeah it's set on that so it just remembers the setting just zoom in a little bit for you guys there so the display is actually quite easy to read now we need to start the soldering iron let's try yeah work and that's heating up very very fast okay it's overshot a little bit I think we'll find this with a new tip. I used to see this on the T12s that it took a while to stabilize. Yeah. I think that would only happen when the tip is actually new. If what I've seen on all the soldering irons applies to this one. Okay. Let's find a PCB we can experiment with. So you guys have seen them before, my old scrap TCOM boards. These are quite heavy, they have quite a heavy ground plane in them. Let's try it in the clamp, see how well it holds it. This is the sort of PCB when I think a clamp or holder is more important. Let's try and desolder something. Okay, we'll try without flux first. We can always put some flux on. Okay, let's try. Taking a little while to get some heat into there, actually. Okay, that got it. I'll come back in with the edge. This is probably me not being so familiar with this type of tip. Okay, but I have got it. Can we desolder this? Let's see. This should allow me to heat both sides at once. Oh yeah, that came off easily, okay. That worked very well. 
this sort of tip is actually quite useful for this sort of work again so I'll come in with the solder we have solder on there same with the other end so you can use like one end of this type of tip let's go so I have to effectively warm one end first get some heat in go for the other end okay yeah it's coming so I just put a little bit of pressure on it just to move it okay off it comes that was a bit difficult to actually heat both ends of the component once due to the shape of it try something like one of these capacitors this should be more simple very easy okay so we can see that does work I'll change the tip for the BC2 the type is more like the one I would usually use I'll take my USB analyzer we'll connect this to the supplied power supply and let's see what sort of wattage this soldering iron is actually running at okay so this is my USB analyzer just connect the soldering iron switch it on okay it's gone to 20 volts at the moment it's just in standby it's not actually running so hold the button down right so it's drawing 70 watts I saw then 71 watts okay let's remember the temperature this one stabilized much quicker than the other tip again it's the first time I've actually used it so it's now up to temperature we just see a quick burst of power occasionally let's have a look let's go for one of these so you see we get like a, a burst of power okay every so often let's try to desolder this one so we get some heat and it's come off easily okay so we can see it does draw around 70 watts at the peak but it's not having to do that continuously to unsolder these okay that one just came off again let me just get the tweezers so it certainly does use its rated power I'll have a quick look now at these tips and I have some other tips of this size as well C245 let's look at the resistance it measures I'll compare it with the other ones I've got see if these actually are the same or not or if they are 5.5 ohm I don't know maybe the other ones are the same I have maybe they are 2.5 let's have a look so this is the knife tip that came with the soldering iron let's check the resistance so we measure from here to here this is just ground this is what's called a PTC heater so the resistance increases with temperature okay about 6.4 this is one of the tips I've not used what's this one read six so this will probably depend on the temperature of the room it's probably about 30 in my workshop at the moment I'll just check that so ambient temperature of my workshop yeah 28.7 that's with the air con on it is summer still here till the end of September is summer and then it isn't that much cooler after that okay so we can see the 
resistance of those. I have a few other tips, so let's see. What's this one read? Much lower. So this is probably one of the 2.5. So we'll try this in the soldering iron, see if it makes much difference. Yeah, here's one more. Yeah, it reads about four. This has gone to sleep, by the way, while I wasn't using it, it's now warming up again. I'll change the tip and we'll try this on the 65 watt supply. Then I have a 100 watt supply. We can try that as well to give you some idea of how this will perform if you use your own supply with it. Okay, so once again, with the supplied power supply, boots up, 20 volts, hold the button for a few seconds it says work oh and it shuts down okay so the supplied power supply yeah will not work with those lower resistance tips okay let's try this with the 100 watt supply so here is a 100 watt supply okay 100 watt max so this is 20 volts at five amps. Okay, let's give this a go. Okay, so we're on, start the soldering iron. Yeah, and this is going about 76 watts actually, a little bit higher. It's certainly warmed up a lot quicker. Again, this is a new tip, not you, so it may just take a little while to stabilise. And it restarted. Let's give it again. Maybe because it's a new tip, it just restarted by itself that time. It didn't stay off. It's a stop. Work. Yeah. So either the power supply or the soldering iron doesn't like this tip now this power supply came off another t245 soldering iron okay work and shuts down okay I'll just try a tip that I use on the other soldering iron with this power supply. This is a bent conical tip. Again, C245. Let's check the resistance of this one. This has had some use, as you can see. Yep, 3.2. So we'll try this one. Again, we'll power up. Start the soldering iron. And it shuts down. Okay. Could be this, possibly. So let's switch that off. Let's connect the power directly to the soldering iron. Switch on. Okay. No, it shuts down. Here's another soldering iron which I reviewed previously. Okay. So this is using that same tip which was causing the other one to shut down. But I do notice that in actual fact it's running at a lower wattage. Okay, even when it was warming up. Let's actually try and solder something with this one. 
and we'll just watch the wattage again so we'll go for another surface mount component similar to the ones we've been desoldering already for example this capacitor okay that just came off go for something else there's a resistor here okay we'll just watch the display again let's see how well it comes off yeah it comes off let's investigate this a little bit further it could well be the case that my power supply 100 watt is shutting down because according to the documentation with the 2.5 ohm tips this can draw 150 watts i don't have another pd power supply that can supply that sort of power that's seven and a half amps basically at 20 volts but what i do have is my bench power supply or one of them so this can generate 20 volts at 10 amps and i've attached it to the cable that came with the soldering guys so this is the one with the battery connector on the xt60 just zoom in a little bit get the focus okay so we can see that the flat side here is the positive side it's marked positive just there by my fingernail this is the negative side okay i also look that up online as well i have my multimeter here so this is one of the tips i already have c245 this is 2.6 ohm so this is a 2.5 ohm tip and i'll set this to 20 volts or just over as the maximum voltage is 21 let's put a camera on that and you see it here 20.7 i'll just uh, knock it down the touch i mean bear in mind there'll probably be a little bit of voltage drop in these wires here's the tip and let's power this up so we can see how much current this is going to draw We can see the display what happens while it's powering up okay let's start it working and now it doesn't shut down so the problem there was simply the power supply tripping out it's going above five amps sometimes now this is really interesting because that other soldering iron was working okay on a 100 watt supply with one of these tips and from what i can see it doesn't draw anywhere near as much current so that must be limiting the performance of the tip to get it to work on a 100 watt supply and this doesn't this is giving us raw power effectively let's see how well this actually works now okay so a big chunky capacitor like before yeah solder add some more to this end i'm using leaded solder by the way this is what i always use so this gives a comparison with everything else and that came off cleanly with no problem at all okay we'll go with one of these resistors as well add some solder both ends these are quite chunky resistors okay let's see what we can do yeah that's coming there this is nice guys i can only tell you this works really nice okay 
I'm going to do one last check, and that's to turn this up to 380, which is the temperature I normally use on my other soldering iron. And let's see how it, well it works. Okay, 380. That's set. Let's start it again. Work. Very rapid. Okay, set it to 380. So it's actually remembered both settings. I can just touch the buttons, Luke. 330, 380. Another feature of this, that's nice. Okay. A bit of solder. Right, let's try it. Well, I've got a very large blob of solder on here, actually, but that'll probably help. Yeah, she's coming off. Okay. I have to say, this is a really nice soldering iron. It's very small, very light. But from what I can see, it really comes into its own when you use it with a power supply capable of driving these tips. Okay. It worked well enough before with the supplied power supply. I think that's great if you want to use it portable, but... Personally, I think on the bench with a bench supply is where you get the full performance out of this with these type of tips. I've also learned two more things on this video that I hope you have as well. One is that not all C245 tips are the same. Okay. There are lower powered 5.5 ohm ones and higher powered 2.5 ohm ones. That's the first thing I've learned. And the second thing that not all soldering irons are the same because the other one I was trying could drive these tips off the 100 watt power supply. And to do that, it must have been limiting the power to the tip. That's why it was taking longer to warm up. So rather than this one actually not working properly, you might say with that power supply, it was actually working very properly because it was trying to drive the tip to the full rating and the other one wasn't. Personally, because I already have plenty of PD power supplies, I would be tempted to buy this, just the soldering iron or with the four tips and use my own, okay? I don't do out of 10, but it's very nice. I like it, okay? It works really well and at a very good price. This soldering iron stand really is excellent. And for less than $20, I think it's really well made really easy to use there's quite a bit of clearance underneath it if you've got a board with something chunky on the back of it okay that i will break my rules and give it 11 out of 10 because it's cheap and it's solid and it works really well okay guys get discussing this down there look forward to hearing from you and i look forward to seeing you all soon again on learning electronics repair ciao for now guys